All right, so now in this video, we're gonna take a look at this circuit, which is a uh, pulse generator circuit that uh, I came up with. I found the basic schematics, but I uh, gave it my own little twist. So, in any case, what it is, is right now the output is off. When we press the switch, we get a brief pulse. Let's get a little closer there. And now that we're zoomed in, you're gonna see here that uh, the LED is not very bright while we pulse, so I have in there right now a, a 0.1 microfarad capacitor, and I actually wanted the a 0.47 microfarad capacitor, but I had already printed out the sheet with 0.1 microfarad. So first thing we're going to do, we're going to uh, ink this one out and uh, replace it with the 4 or 0.47 microfarad capacitor. There we go, and my body falsely triggered the uh, transistor. But in uh, any case, now you can see we have a brighter pulse. So now let's really uh, start the video by building this uh, step by step. So I do have the jumpers placed. That'll make it a little easier to uh, place the components and the switch. I'm leaving the switch in place because I yanked them out and uh, putting them back in. It's kind of rough on the board. So in any case, we're going to start off with the transistors. So there are two N2222 NPN type transistors. As you can see, the arrow is not pointing in on the schematic symbol. When the arrow is pointing in, that's a PNP type transistor. But when it's not pointing in, you can think of that as a NPN. And for uh, every two N type transistor I've come across so far, the left pin is the emitter, middle pin is the base, and the right pin is the collector when you're looking at the flat side. So it says 2N2222 on there, A, it's the A version, can handle a little more voltage. But in any case, we're going to put the emitter, for uh, both of them actually, to the uh, ground rail there, the negative rail on uh, the breadboard. And I'll just kind of center it. So there is a gap from uh, the collector to that jumper up there, as you can see. So we might as well just put the LED in right now to fill that gap so with the LED the long lead the anode needs to be more positive short lead the cathode needs to be more negative for it to light up so I like to work positive down towards negative but since these have three pins close to each other I can spread them out and still fit it in but uh, for this circuit I'm just gonna work my way up with the LED positive up to negative so the long lead the anode needs to go to where the collector is and the short lead the cathode to the uh, ground rail and it really doesn't want to go into this spot if I really couldn't get in there I would just slide it back behind the transistor but uh, anyways I got her in there and uh, there you go so let's uh, put the other transistor in for right now put the uh, emitter there flat sides facing to the right just like this one there we go now, let's go to the uh, two resistors here. So first let's do this one. It goes to the collector, to the node where the collector and the anode of the LED is. A node is a spot where two or more components come together. So like right here is ground, that's one node for these two transistors. Even though there's no line, they go to the same spot as far as the circuit is concerned. So, got a one kilo ohm goes from the 5 volt positive rail we have a 5 volt difference between the two rails and to the node where the collector and the uh, anode are so I'm only using uh, 1 kilo ohm resistors and uh, 10 kilo ohm resistors the 10 kilo ohm resistors have a red stripe that one doesn't have a red stripe so it's pretty easy to uh, grab that one quick and put that actually up here to where the anode of the LED is. So now if I turn the power on the LED turns on. As you can see we got a current path there from positive and negative. Nothing's going to the base of the transistor so it's off. And uh, so that's something to uh, stay aware of. That's going to come up again. Now you can see at the base of the transistor we're also going to have the capacitor come there. One of the leads we are going to take our 10 kilo ohm resistor 
and so that's the middle pin try not to lose any components while I tip this and again just directly from uh, the positive rail right there and if these train these uh, resistors bump into each other now the uh, transistor is on but if they bump into each other they don't affect each other they're insulated so but uh, still we should leave a little gap so they don't get too warm and so we lessen any other chance of an accidental connection now let's go to a, this transistor we already shown that we connected to the ground rail let's uh, why not first do uh, this one to uh, collector to the 5 volt positive rail same thing as this one it is the top pin since it's a 1 kilo ohm resistor I'm grabbing the one without the red stripe and I grabbed them out of baggies where they are labeled so it's pretty obvious inside the baggie the 10 kilo ohms have a red stripe whereas the 1 kilo ohms don't and that's the only two value resistors I have on here so I can quickly just go by that uh, red stripe there so in any case we have uh, this resistor set up there we need the uh, base resistor a 10 kilo ohm resistor which is gonna jump the gap from uh, the switch up here down here and I'm gonna put it in front of the uh, transistor make sure that I am actually at the right pin of the switch I actually filmed this step-by-step -step build uh, before this but uh, I made a mistake and uh, so I'm refilming it in the uh, in the last one I built the circuit I misplaced the uh, wire when it came to uh, that side of the switch and of course it didn't work so that's why though but uh, in any case that wasn't why I refilmed it I quickly noticed that but uh, that was a problem so now this capacitor I know you can't really see it but it says 474 what that means is 47 with four zeros for 470 picofarad which is the same as 0.47 microfarad the 0.1 microfarad capacitor that uh, I tested with before I decided I want the 0.47 but forgot to change the uh, number on the schematic or wrote it in the wrong one it says 104 for 100 picofarad I was actually facing the wrong way but it's blurry anyways you can't see it but uh, it says 104 for 100,000 picofarad which is the same as 0.1 microfarad so yeah when you see the numbers on these on capacitors these small value capacitors it's probably in picofarad unless it says otherwise and so we are connecting that to the collector of this transistor so the top pin for uh, that transistor don't know if you can see that too well and then the uh, base of the other transistor right there middle pin so let's turn it on and see how we are doing so nothing uh, lit up or anything that's good until we hit the switch we have a pulse so let's look at what's going on within this circuit now let's move along to this uh, next little diagram that I drew and see what's uh, going on here so right now the we're at a, a steady state so there's a small voltage going to the base of the transistor that can go to ground we have a 5 volt difference there and uh, so the transistor is on current is conducting freely so uh, well it's being limited by the resistor but once it gets to this node it conducts freely through the transistor I should say whereas the LED has a 1.5 volt minimum uh, forward voltage before it will conduct and so that's keeping this below 1.5 volts so the LED is not going to light up the capacitor now right now it's charged we'll look at those voltages uh, coming up and no more current can flow through it but when it was charging we had the positive current here coming over to this side of the capacitor that's why this side's positive and then it was coming out this side through the transistor to the ground rail that's why this side's more negative this side's on the more negative side of the circuit and that side's on the more positive side of the circuit so we have a 5 volt difference but it takes about 0.7 volts in that range for the uh, base to emitter to conduct and that voltage is lost to the uh, circuit that has to go through it 
So we have 5 volts minus 0.7 volts for 4.3 volts. So once it charges to this level though, it uh, just holds there. Current stops flowing. That's why I drew this as a green, just so we can look at what the current path was. But to indicate no current is uh, currently flowing because we're not pressing the uh, switch. So the LED can't light up. The current is just sinking right through the transistor. So now we come over here to where I drew what's happening right when you see that flash going. When we press the switch we have the uh, 5 volt difference, a uh, path now I should say from the 5 volt VCC. So VCC that is the side of the power supply for an NPN transistor that goes to the collector. So you can see we've got the collector up there. That's what VCC means. The uh, voltage on the collector side of an NPN transistor. Unfortunately when you're using PNP transistors the uh, collector is down towards the negative side but still on the positive side of the circuit of a transistor uh, circuit it says VCC for some reason. So in any case just thought I would quickly uh, mention that. So we close the switch and we have a current path to the base of the transistor and uh, to ground there and uh, of over 1.5 or uh, over 0.7 volts that allows the transistor to fully conduct and now the uh, capacitor has a path to discharge so it's starting off at uh, positive on this side negative on that side of 4.3 volts and so since this is more negative than up there and this side's more positive than down there, we can have a current flow like that. So ultimately we get to 0.6 volts right there. I forgot to add the V. Oh well. But uh, ultimately we get a positive 0.6 volts on this side and uh, a negative voltage on that side that's held that way due to the uh, switch being held which we can see here the switch is held down the capacitor is steady state that's why I got the green it's showing that the energy is still being held there but there's no path because we got to the voltage difference which is based on this current path being able now to go this way because it's not being sucked to the capacitor it can go this way to the base of the transistor which holds the voltage here at the uh, base to emitter drop and then turns the transistor on. So we have the current path through here which is easier than the LED. And so it stays like that while we hold the switch and even when we release the switch the LED has no reason to uh, turn on. This capacitor just keeps conducting like it likes to uh, do even though the capacitor is uh, charging. One other thing that uh, I forgot to mention is since the transistor is not conducting and doesn't influence this part of the circuit you can cover the uh, transistor if it makes it easier to uh, think of how the uh, current's flowing so basically it doesn't exist if it's not conducting and finally let's get a voltage measurement of that capacitor so I know it's far away but uh, let's, let's zoom in there quick so as I said before it's 4.3 volts this side positive, that side negative. When the button's not pressed, when it's pressed, it drops down to negative 0 0.6 volts. And I uh, covered that quite a bit in the video, but now let's actually take a multimeter measurement. So we got uh, the black probe to the that side of the capacitor and the red probe on that side. So that lets us know that uh, the red probe there is more positive than the black probe by 4.3 volts and let's hit the uh, switch now you can see it dropped it's actually a little more negative than 0.6 volts I should have wrote down 0.7 volts but uh, close enough there you can see uh, basically 0.7 volts in the negative so right now the black probe is more positive than the red probe that's what it's telling you basically the black probe is usually the zero volt reference point and the red probe is the voltage difference from that point. Sometimes it's higher, sometimes it's lower. When it's higher it's positive, when it's lower it's a negative voltage difference.